How you doing, guys? New York Saddle Hunter coming at you. Uh, remember, guys, if you like what Joe and I are bringing to you, you know, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon, and if you like this video, hit like. All right, so today, uh, today Joe and I are in a new area. Um, this is something that uh, we've driven by a few times in the 2019 season. We kind of always had a little, you know, a gut feeling. You know, we always, this was kind of like on the back burner. We wanted to check this spot out. So today, uh, we're going to bring you through and kind of show you what we do. Um, you know, we're going to be putting a paracord loop in, and uh, but uh, we're going to bring you through kind of like step by step. Like I said, just kind of showing the process that Joe and I go through. You know, when we find a new area, find a good sign, hot sign, and uh, you know, we kind of did a walk through here and, and, and found what we're looking for. So, you know, we don't know they could be using it at night. Uh, that's definitely something we won't know until we get cameras out for this year but uh but it's something that's worthwhile you know putting some time into because the sign we're finding in here is definitely hot and uh and hopefully this will lead to a 2020 kill um so yeah you want to add to that yeah um you know uh, one of the big things that we're doing here is uh and it's something that's really important for anybody that's getting into uh any of the rope climbing methods that we're um showing you guys um we we try to do as much postseason, uh, post and preseason setup as possible by putting in uh, preset paracord loops, so that it's very easy when we come back to get our climbing line in the tree where we want it. So we're going to show you everything from start to finish. Show you how we we um, we found a spot. Um, this, we're going to follow the sign right to the tree that we selected, limb selection, getting our paracord loop up in the tree, and actually climbing the tree. And that's this is a big tip also is make sure that just because you put a paracord loop in a tree, climb the tree. This way there's no surprises on the day right. you go and hunt. Yeah. We're going to get up there. We're going to look. We're going to see if we need to, to trim any branches out of the way. Um, you know, if there's anything in there that that has us concerned, right. and we want to get it all ready for next year. And then all that work is done, and all we got to do is come back next season yep. uh, at the right time and hunt it yeah and that is that's a that's a big tip too because it, it's something that we've encountered ourselves you know we, we've thrown some power cord loops in in the past and then when we went to hunt it realized that uh you know the where we were set up it's it's a little too much of a lean um you know it was yeah. kind of uncomfortable and and i mean yeah you want to try to pick the straightest tree you can um you can hunt out of a leaning tree but that's the thing is to get up into the tree make it almost like an actual mock hunt you know so now you're going through all the motions all right so now you know for sure the day comes to hunt it yeah. there's no surprises yeah so we're going to show you how we do that so uh stay tuned and uh hope you guys yeah. like it follow along guys hey guys all right so uh as joe and i were talking about this this new spot here we're going to do some scouting for the 2020 season so we came in here this spot here is a bit, it's, it's, it's nice, it's nice and thick. Um, it's a little bit busy for us to get in and out. Um, you know, uh, entry and exit might be a bit noisy, but as we were following this trail, it did open up into a nice bench and, uh, and pretty much that's where we found our, our entry and exits are gonna be fairly easy to get in and out of. Um, you know, we'll be less intrusive in this spot and uh, this should work out well. But on this run, um, you know, right over here, over this overhanging laurel, we get, you know, first scrape here, and we're just going to follow along down this trail, and we'll show you exactly, you know, the tree we picked out, and, uh, you know, hopefully uh, all this will come together and end up in a nice kill for us. So if we, you know, follow us along, we'll kind of show you how we do it. We want to get on this nice run right here and follow this right up. area here kind of it's, it's a bit of a saddle I mean it's got a little bit of a higher knob here much higher up there um, like I said it's a nice cover here and we kind of figured what the deer were doing is uh, a little further down this trail here they were actually crossing the road um, and that's that's what really made this spot stand out to us um, just just the way driving the road it looked like two nice two nice areas you know two, two nice uh, adjoining areas and that that was the connection in here um, kind of like a point leading to the road where they would cross right, a right. point coming out to the to the road yeah. so uh, so yeah let's follow along this trail here.
he had his this here it kind of culminates in a really nice bench. It's got some really nice, got some nice beaches in here. That drop beach not in the fall. A lot of good oaks in here. Um, you know, I found a lot of a lot of caps in the tops of the trees. Where I guess last year this thing produced it put some, it put a lot of acorns on the ground. So it was a good food source in here for them. And if something also, if they wanted to, they can drop off into this bottom. This runs into a big beaver pond down in here, and it really gets thick. Um, you know, so they got a lot of diversity in here. It's, it's it, kind of areas what they're always kind of seeking out. You know? so. Scrape right here. Now today is twenty sixth, January twenty sixth. Yep, January twenty sixth. Um, as you can see, I mean, the scrape's not poured out, but, you know, it's, this could have happened either, you know, the last, well, actually, we got an inch and a half of rain last night, so more than likely, that was this morning, where that ground is scruffed up a bit. Yeah. Um, but, what, two scrapes within 30 yards, another 30 yards was, you know, the other one, so it seems like every 30, 40 yards, this deer's making another scrape. So this area is really starting to turn on good for us, you know, this is the kind of sign that Joe and I like to find. Uh, this is a spot where, you know, a buck feels secure in here. He's on a nice bench. He may, this may be a great midday spot. You know? So, uh, he's a little further down here. I think it was right around, right around here. Joe and I were kind of talking, discussing what they might be doing. And I don't know if you can see, but I was looking around and I saw a bear patch up there, and I, I didn't think much of it at first. I said, "Ah, you know, it looks like a scrape." But from here, I really didn't see an overhanging branch. But I, you know, I wanted to get up there and investigate it anyhow, just see what it turned out to be. And sure enough, it is. It's a big primary scrape, and it has actually, a, a, you know, it's got an overhanging branch, but it's pretty high up. But it's probably like one of them scrapes where, you know, you see the bucks get up on their hind legs and, you know, mouth the branch and get their antlers in it and stuff. Um, that scrape really, really turned us on. We've seen that in there. It's on this nice bench here. And, uh, okay, now we got to pick out a tree. Now we got to find the killing tree in here. So, uh, you follow me along. Maybe what we came up with. what we're looking for. You know, nice big open scrape. And I mean, and like I said, we're January 26th and, uh, and there's, there's fresh uh, deer poop in the scrape and, you know, they're still spending some time in here and this is later on in the season and stuff. We're still, still hitting scrapes, still checking them out. So, you know, this may be a spot that, uh, you know, is definitely of interest to us. Uh, like I said, this could be night, a lot of nighttime movement coming through here, that's something we don't know. 
but eventually what we'll end up doing probably around May, June, we'll hang cameras in here. We'll see what, you know, what we can pick up on our cameras. And you know, hopefully we'll find a nice resident buck that's, you know, calling this place home. And uh, you know, it's like I said, it's got a lot of food, it's got a lot of cover. It's got good water source right off of this ridge here. Um, but this is a nice, nice bench. It's got a ridge up above here and it drops off into this really nice bench. And you kind of find, you know, it, it faces southwest, so it's a nice warm exposure for them. It's something that obviously they're spending time, and you know, we like I said, we're finding the sign there, so it kind of it kind of confirms our suspicions. What's the the biggest thing that we found that really confirmed our? Suspicions? Oh yeah, this is something funny. <laughs> um, if any of you guys, I don't know any of you new guys, but some maybe some of you older guys, there was this big talk. Um, I guess it was about a year ago. You know, a lot of you guys, uh, including us too, uh, we we followed Dan in full. And uh, we love that guy. He, you know, great hunter. Um, he's just, just an awesome guy. Great personality. So anyhow, they got to talking about this, this balloon craze. And Dan, Dan's a big guy on thermals and stuff like that. And, you know, and we kind of are too. You know, his thermals are going to make or break a hunt. And uh, so he said, he was talking about a segment where he said, you ever notice you're walking along in the woods and, and uh, you know, you're scouting out an area and you find a... a you know, a party balloon, an old helium balloon. And uh, he says, you ever, you ever wonder to yourself why that balloon ended up in that area? You know, he says, maybe it's in that area because, and then of course in that same area, now you're finding a lot of sign. You're finding old rubs, new rubs, scrapes and everything. Because obviously that spot works to the, for the deer, okay? It's an area where he can pick up a lot of information. The thermals work to his advantage. And just for some reason, the way that balloon, when it started dropping, you know, uh, the way those thermals placed it down. Yeah, I mean, was, there was kind of like a correlation between the deer sign and the balloons being in that area. You know, it turned into a uh, almost. It's like more a, of a joke. I, I guess but, it's more of a joke. You know, but it, it's but it ironic was, how but often it happens. But the funny thing is, right when he was talking about it, you know, it was kind of like, yeah, wait a minute, I I can remember that. And actually, Joe and I were on another ridge not too far from here, and we were picking sheds up on this ridge, and we found about five or six yeah, sheds. Every time on this we ridge. found a shed, we found a balloon, and there was a balloon there. And it, uh, it was just a, it was it was funny, you yeah. know, it was something. But, but anyhow, here we are. Okay? We're in a spot here where you know nice scrapes, rubs, a lot of good trails, and there's your balloon. There's your balloon. <laughs> you know, so I don't know. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> Maybe Dan's not that crazy, huh? I don't know, but if uh, I tell you what, if I kill the buck, I'm mounting the balloon with the buck. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, you know, we actually we like the sign in here. It, it looks really good. There's a lot of really old, old rubs in here too. So obviously, you know, this spot has been appealing to bucks for years. Um, but what we're going to do now is we picked out a tree, and it's actually this double beach over in here. So we're gonna set a loop in there. I'm gonna just show you guys, you know, to show you how obviously we walked you down along the trail. We found the sign that we like in here. And it's a, it's a, it's a spot of interest for us. So we're gonna hang a loop in here so that when we do come back and we do hunt it, you know, it's just something that's easier to get into. If we do wanna get in in the morning, we have the preset loop, all right? So that kinda of takes care of the whole, you know, you can't throw a throw ball in the dark. Cause as you know, Joe and I, we like DRT climbing and uh, you know, it's just something, a real minimalist approach for us. We don't have to carry stands and sticks into an area. And that's just, that's the way we like to do it. But, uh, but we do a lot of this uh, preseason and postseason scouting, you know, so that we can find these spots, hang the loop, and it just makes it that much easier for us to get into a spot. So, so, uh, so you know, we're gonna, gonna show you now. I, I got the tree over there picked out and uh, I'll get the throw ball out. We'll throw a rope up in it. We'll get our preset up in there as well too. But I'll also go up into the tree and just, you know, kind of pick out areas where I want to put a platform, okay? Because like I said, we don't want any surprises come October, November when we're ready to hunt it. So it's always a good practice to get up in the tree and, you know, just get a good feel for things, man. Maybe you have to trim a branch here or there, you know, that's in your shooting lane. But just just do all the work now. So later on, all you got to do is concentrate on killing the buck. So uh, check it out. So. That's always the problem. Now 
Joe, Joe didn't show you. That was actually the hundred and first time. <laughs> nah, just kidding. It was actually the second. <laughs> Lap spread. Yeah. All right, guys. So yeah, right. Uh, what we're gonna do is we got a throw ball. We threw our throw ball up over a limb. We're gonna leave a uh, paracord loop in here. But rather than just setting our preset paracord loops and not climbing, we like to come in and give it a, t a, a dry run. We'll climb up the tree, look around, see if there's any shooting lanes we need to trim. Um, we don't want any surprises the day we come in and hunt. So we like to climb in the off season. It's kind of fun anyway. And uh, we can check it out. We get up high, take a look, see what it looks like. And then, like I said, when we come back to hunt it, there'll be no surprises. So uh, I'm gonna climb DRT method today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the variation using a foot loop. I, I put a video on our channel just last week about that. So you can check that out. Yeah, I'm just gonna zoom into you a little bit here on that foot loop. Maybe you can yeah, show that a little bit. I basically just took my tether. I'm using my, my regular tether. The beauty of this is you don't have to buy any additional gear. I have a ropeman that I use on my lineman belt. So I'm gonna utilize my ropeman. Or you could use a Prusik, that'll work fine as well. Um, and I got a foot loop on my foot from my tether. So I just, I just caught that. I've got my ropeman underneath my Blake's hitch, and that's going to be my foot loop. And what will happen is, pull it up, and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to step into it. I'm not going to use a hip thrusting method like typically people use for DRT. So this is kind of be, going to be very similar to SRT because you're using leg strength instead of your hips and a technique. So a little bit different variation on it. Um, I seem to find it a little bit easier. I think some people will, but uh, either either way, you just got to find out what works best for you. So let's give it a shot here. And when we're hunting, we're going nice and slow. It's not a race. Nice and easy, so you're not exerting yourself. Yeah, with this technique, you can definitely see this is more leg dominant than yep. it is, you know, using your hips and pulling with your arms. kind of picked this beech tree out in this area because it's uh, number one it's a double leadered tree so it'll work well for you know if we both decide to come in here and one guy film one guy hunt um, and it's a little busy too it's got some limbs in it and stuff so it'll kind of break you up break our pattern up we won't really have to get too too high in here um, we're on the bench. We're on a, be a bench that runs on the side of this ridge here. Um, we're probably more than likely going to hunt this. I mean, a, a, a north wind will work really well. It'll cast our scent down, way down into the bottom. Uh, and the deer are typically running. <clears throat> the deer are typically running east to west here, west to east. So any southwest wind will throw us up over the ridge behind us. But we won't have to get too, too high in this tree. Um, Joe is now about, uh, I'd say he's about 
the bottom of his feet right now, he's probably about 20 feet up into this tree. I'll give you some kind of idea. I'd probably tether in right here. Just a couple little things to trim, but not bad. Actually, I can get a shot anywhere here. Scrapes right there. It works. Yeah, that tree will, like I was saying before, that tree will hold both of us nice. Uh, yeah, both, one guy on one side, one on the other. Right, one guy filming, one guy shooting. Um, both of our packs up in there. We won't be in each other's way. But the nice thing about that sets up where you can see where those two trunks kind of, they cross each other. Um, with a camera arm, will be right in between the both of us. So whether, you know, I'm the shooter or Joe's the shooter, you know, it'll be kind of easy for either one of us to grab a camera arm to, depending on which way this buck comes. That's it, and he's down. So that's not a bad variation, you know. DRT, DRT with a little SRT foot loop involved. <laughs> it's just another way to get up a tree. Yep. Yeah. Like we say, there's uh, only thing that limits you get into getting into a tree is the tree and your imagination. And your imagination, absolutely, so. man. You know. All right, not bad. guys so I said Joe showed a little variation there a DRT with a foot loop uh, just makes it a little bit easier you know for some of the guys who feel that DRT may be a little bit harder for you um, but I I emphasize is uh, you know just just stay at it man stay out there the more you practice the easier this technique becomes um, but that definitely that little foot loop variation that that that's a pretty nice addition to it um, you know in it's kind of, I guess, in the halfway point between going totally, you know, full SRT, you know. Yeah, um, I think, you know, probably, you know, I think with DRT, there's there's always a little bit more friction. You're using a friction hitch that you got to pull through right, and you got to go right. over the limb. So there's always a little bit more friction, but well, like I, said, with I feel this like year, it's a little on the safer side because you're not dealing with a lot of mechanical ascenders and that sort of thing so right, right. Oh, okay. I, I, see what you're I feel right. like I, I always kind of trust a prusik or something right. like that it just right. I don't know yeah. that's just me right and like I said too it's you know that that method there is more leg dominant which you're yeah. going to be much stronger um, and it's uh, easy you go slow yeah. you just yeah, you know you're hunting time. you don't you're need to race build up the tree up sweat. Right. you're not going to build mean, up me, sweat. like I said uh, you know doing the DRT the way I climb it because I've been doing it for so long I really I don't, I don't build up a sweat because the same thing. I can go as slow as I want or as fast as I want. Yep. Um, but, uh, but no, like I said, we're just trying to give you guys, you know, as much information as possible. Something that makes your life a little easier. If so, you know, get out there and try it and uh, let us know. Let us know what you guys think. Yeah, I mean, again, the, the beauty of this kind of climbing is, you know, we're up in this tree. We have, uh, we brought 75 feet of. Uh, 11.4 millimeter Samson Predator climbing line with a throw ball and everything. Total weight, total package of climbing gear to get up as high as 35 feet if we wanted to go that high yeah. is 5.5 pounds. Right. And as you can see, climbing, it's very quiet. And the key to it is what we're doing today. We're setting the preset paracord loops. Right. Right. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take my paracord loop, I'm gonna tie it to that climbing line. I'll pull it over, I'll tie it off and we'll leave it indefinitely, it'll be here forever. Yep. And we have that uh, 550 paracord that we we picked up. I don't know what I did with the spool. Yeah, but we'll show that. Yeah, here's the spool. But we picked up 1,000 feet, about yep. 45 bucks, I think, yep. cost us. 45 bucks, and uh, if you're gonna, what do we figure it out? If you're gonna do uh, roughly, what do you figure? If you're 30 feet 
if your limb is 30 feet, you're 60 feet of material, 25, you're 50 feet of material. Yeah. I think we figured it out. I think we be, figured out we got about 15 or so, yeah, more somewhere. or less, about 15 presets we can right. get on a thousand feet. Out of a thousand feet. feet right. It'll let you do the math, but, uh, yeah. but yeah, it's, uh, this will go a long ways and, uh, we put them in there, especially in them spots that we don't want to, that we want to come in in the dark. We don't have to throw a throw ball or anything. Right. More of these we have out and we set them up now. Uh, we'll just be ready for the season next year, and you know now's the time to do it. There's no, there's no leaves in the way. You're gonna know what it looks like in right, the fall when the leaves exactly. are down. Yeah, this is the mock for for your for your real hunt. You yeah, know? right. And we we really enjoy getting out there in the postseason because you know we're looking at scrapes. We we're seeing the sign from this year, and hopefully we got some of these bucks that hold over. Right. And we're gonna be back in here. Uh, like I said, today is January 26th. Yep. We're gonna come back in here. You know, I'm probably I usually like to wait. Uh, mid to late February till I start shed hunting. This way I'm pretty sure that, you know, at least 90% of the bucks have dropped their horns already um, by that point. Um, so we'll get back in here, gonna get back in here with my, my new dog this year. Uh, I got a chocolate lab and he's uh, he's ecstatic when it comes to finding horn, man. He's become one of his favorite pastimes. So. That's gonna be a lot of fun. So that's gonna be fun watching him work. And, uh, and hopefully we can find, uh, you know, some new bone and maybe some old stuff. And, you know, we'll bring that to you as well. Okay. Okay, guys. So uh, what we're gonna do here, we we have our climbing line up in the tree. So we just did a, a, a dry run to make sure everything looked good, and the 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 our line is where we want it in the tree. It's gonna work when we come back to hunt it. So now we're gonna want to leave our paracord loop in the tree. So in order to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one end of the line on my climbing line that I already had up in the tree, or if you just had your throw ball, if you were just doing it with the throw ball. Um, you're going to take one side of it, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a loop in the end of my paracord. So I'm just going to make a loop. I'm just going to do kind of like a figure eight here. Pull it up tight. And then I'm going to take, I'm going to take my loop and run it, run it through. Do it a couple times so it doesn't fall out. Nice and tight so it doesn't fall out on us. And then I got my uh, my roll here, and we're gonna pull the climbing line on up through, and it'll pull my paracord up through. You don't. You want to make sure when you pull it up. If you got a tight crotch, I can hear we have a little bit of a tight crotch here. You want to make sure you pull the side of the line. It doesn't have all this crap on it, so it doesn't get stuck. Got the other end of the line here. Take my knife. I don't want to waste anything. So I want to try to minimize how much I take off. And I'm going to utilize this. One thing we do when we tie off our paracord loops, it's nice to find a limb or something to hang on to and leave it nice and tight so the wind doesn't take it and it doesn't get end up, you know, someplace where you don't want it to be. And then when you come back to hunt, you can't reach it. So this is perfect. There's like a nice little limb here. I'll just cut it off probably about here. got my little loop here. I'm just going to tie it off to the other end. I like to leave a little bit of a tail hanging off of it too because if I want I can use this tail that I can tie it to my my line or if you wanted sometimes you can clip your carabiner through. In this one I got a tight crotch it might my carabiner might not go through might be an issue. Next, next time I climb it probably should have did it when I came up. Uh, if I trimmed off that one little limb that makes it not a tight crotch then 
would have made my life a little bit easier, but I didn't think about it when I was up there, so. That's all there is to it. I'll just take it here and you know, maybe tie it off. So that's there when you come back. That's all there is to it. We'll leave that there indefinitely. It'll be there for many years to come, as long as it lasts. Um, it is probably a good idea for you guys to... Um, it's a nice idea to maybe come through every once in a while and check them out. Um, sometimes you can get squirrels and stuff like that that might mess with them. But in our experience, we haven't had too, many trouble, too much trouble with it. So, uh, but can't hurt to check them out one time before you come in in the season. But that's about it. We'll film the master, the DRT master. Yeah, it's right dead on the top of it, right? Yeah. You want to cut it down what by that that limb where your yeah, foot that is? That limb's live. So. Well, I'm saying like if you cut it off. Yeah, right here. Yeah, and it, you're just cutting off dead, so you're not damaging anything. Actually, with this limb coming down over here, Scott, <laughs> be a good spot for a mock scrape. I mean, you got a live scrape only 10 yards away, but this is just sets up nice for it. So I love about be you know beach, you know, the limbs they come down like that. That's something about it, boy, they do like it. That's the thing. We, we're hunters trying to get into trees, and what better way? What better way to get into a tree? Or who do you should you look to first? Um, you know, arborists and uh, using arborist climbing methods to get up into a tree. Uh, there's a reason arborists use it. It's the safest, most efficient way to get up into a tree. Just uh, you, you can't go wrong.
now's the time to do your trimming in the postseason. Getting everything ready. Scotty's like a monkey in a tree, pretty much. 54 years old. You know, some people, they look at DRT climbing and we get a lot of people who look at it and they say, oh, it looks difficult, you're going to be sweating and all that. But, uh, you know, I, I think the thing is for us that we look at it this way. Um, you know, we're, we're proposing these ideas to hunters. And hunters are typically, you know, you're, you're talking about people that are going to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, go out in the freezing cold, climb a mountain, climb up into a tree in the dark, sit all day, shoot a deer, gut the deer, drag it out of the woods. And, uh, you know, there's not too many wimps in hunting. I think uh, that, you know, hunters are a hardier breed of people. So uh, this stuff is not difficult for us, and we're older guys. So... Um, you know, I think most of you, uh, any, any, any guy that's a hunter or any any strong woman can do this. here yeah you could ask it for you well like i said we used that same one where the uh where the preset is yeah tied into but i'll have a rope over here somewhere that'll put me down so one guy looking this way yep which the deer could come from one guy looking that way um but i like that being there it's gonna you probably wouldn't even need a platform with those Right? I could get away with it. I mean, you know, me, Tiff, yeah, I, I love this stuff, you know. Yeah. You know, I got a shot in here, basically. And it's nice, too, because you're actually, you got the, the double of the beach, but then you got that other oak next to you. It actually makes it look like a triple. Yeah. There's, a, you know, it's a, it's busy over there, so you're, you're, your outline's broken up quite a bit. Right. And right there, you're not even that high. You're only probably 15 feet there. To where the bottom of my feet are. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Yep. But I mean, for me, yeah, I, I could make this work. You know, it just that's all I would need is this. You know? Yep. And if I got, you know, if I got a little bit tired, like this, dude. You know. Yep. Sit on your limb. I could hang here all day. Yep. You know, you know and the deer comes. Boom. A shot like this. You know. Yep. I can come around the tree to get a shot over here. I'll move a little bit, but you know, to make it happen. Yep. Probably just that one little limb out of the way. Yeah, it works. This is a good spot. Yeah, I like it. And uh, we're what? Seven yards to that scrape. Nothing like a 10-yard shot, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, and one thing I want to, you know, everybody says, oh, you know, you, you guys move too much up in the tree, you know? Well, yep. You know, we're not moving like that all the time either. Yeah, we're not, we're not moving like this when we're hunting. No, I'm just showing options that you have, you know? Yeah. I mean, look, if you're, you know, I'm sitting in my tree, you know, and I see deer that are moving through, you know, 
80, 100 yards away, you know, and they're coming, and I'm thinking, all right, they're going to come down on this trail here. Now I can kind of, you know, I could get myself into position, you know. Really, all I'd have to do is come here, you know, and come around this side of the tree, and now I have a shot here. And all of us are waiting for that opportunity. Yep. You know, same thing this way. If they're coming from that side, you know, I can get myself into position here, where now I can shoot here. Yep. You know? That's just the beauty of DRTs. It's just you've got such a longer pivot, and you, you can fluctuate around the tree. Yeah, and just saddle hunting in general, because you figure when you got a stand platform, you know, there's yeah. certain spots you're just not going to be able yeah. to get around the yeah, very well, back. You might have a shot here. You know, you might turn around in your stand, and, but, but right, you're so limited. With this, it's just, you know, to me, this is endless. All right, I think we're good. Man. I think we're good. I guess we'll have to wait and see, right? Yeah. I mean, we like this spot. Now we'll just see how good it works. Don't try this at home, folks. <laughs> Of course, the wind's blowing directly at me. Yeah. That ain't coming out. So uh, thanks for watching. Please, uh, if you haven't already, hit subscribe, um, hit like, hit that bell icon if you guys want to be notified anytime we upload anything that's saddle hunting related. And uh, also hit us up on Facebook, New York Saddle Hunter Forum. Send us a friend request. This way we can communicate with you guys and we can all stay in the loop. And uh, we really appreciate you watching. Definitely. Thanks, thanks a lot. guys. Climb thanks again, safe guys. and Climb best safe. of luck.